Hello everyone, welcome back to Lucky Loaders 15 and in this video we're going to be discussing the renewal of this year's Oaks at Epsom on Friday where it's always a high quality race, got maybe a competitive race this year and we'll be going through some stats and facts in recent years to help you try and find the winner of this year's race and also as well we'll be going through some of the lineup in this year's renewal so without further ado we'll get stuck into the business and a good statistic i always like to start with first in these kind of previews is to look at the record of favorites now favorites don't have a particularly strong record in this race in recent years the last favorite you've got to go back and look at to win in was only two years ago to be fair though with a horse called minding which was odds on at 10 to 11 for Aiden o'brien and ryan moore they won very comfortably that day and then beforehand you've got to go back to 2009 with a horse for or, uh, Michael Bell and Jamie Spencer called Zariska, which won at 9-4 to four that day. So favourites don't have a particularly strong record in this race, and it can sometimes pay to go with some outsiders. You've had a 50-1 to one back in 2015 win for Aiden O'Brien called uh, Qualify, and that was a good performance that day. A little bit of a shock win. You've had some other good horses in recent years uh, with uh, Talon at 20 to 1, Was at 20 to 1, and also as well Dance and Rain at 20 to 1. So there have been some good outsiders in uh, the last 10 years or so that have turned up on the day. And maybe there could be another shock that uh, springs to mind this year. So it'd be interesting to see what horses uh, run well. Also, as well, you always want to look at the record of all the top trainers in these kind of races now they don't come more uh, better trainers than a no brian he's got a fantastic record in this race he's won uh, two of the last three renewals and he's going to have a good lineup this year which we'll get talk about in a little bit also as well john gosden's got a very good record in this race he's won it a couple of times in the last uh, few years rafe beckett's had a good record as well in this race winning it a couple of times so is william haggis and um also as well, Ed Dunlop had a winner back in 2010 with a horse called Snow Fairy. So it can maybe pay the way to go with some maybe of the lesser um, known trainers. But like I said, the top trainers often do the business uh, in this race. And if we want to look at this year's renewal, it was always going to be about a horse called Larty Da for John Gosden. And uh, Frankie Dottori was probably going to get the leg up because he'd been riding it in all its starts so far. But unfortunately, it showed a bad blood test at home just over a week ago so unfortunately they had to withdraw this horse and uh, they had to reform the market now the current favorite at the moment is a horse called wild illusion for charlie appleby and william buick ran about four to one in most places at the moment finished fourth in the 1000 guineas that day behind the 66 to one outsider which was a horse of richard hannon's called billiston brook now that uh, particular race was a bit of a strange one that day but Wild Lucian was always prominent and finished fourth in the end in very game style and it managed to hold its uh, position throughout the race. So finishing fourth that day wasn't bad and it definitely showed a little bit of promise as a stayer but I don't think it probably needed that much more it going up in trip. I think only probably a mile and two would probably uh, suit this uh, horse. I don't think a mile and four would be quite beneficial for it because I just didn't like the way that it can go because normally going up by four furlongs is going to be a big step up in trip for these horses especially at a young age and I don't think a mile and uh, four will see this horse home and if it does go well I think it's going to fade towards the end in my opinion if it's looking like it's going to travel well and I would be against Wild Illusion especially with the record of Godolphin in recent years in the classics they haven't won one for a while and also as well, I wasn't keen on this horse staying the trip and the record of favourites is often suggesting that you go against it. So Wild Illusion wouldn't be for me. Now if we want to look away from the favourite, it's obviously going to be the Aidan O'Brien contingent that comes in next. He's got quite a few runners in this year's renewal already. On paper he's got eight that are meant to be going for the Epsom Oaks, but two of those have already been confirmed, Sizzling and also as well a horse called Athene. They're both not going to be running, they've got other targets lined up for the Bally Doyle Maestro. But one of his uh, leading favourites has been a horse called uh, Magical. And Magical has uh, been showing some signs of home that something could be wrong. And they've called out the vet and they're going to make a decision if they're going to send that horse over from Ireland for the race. So it'll be interesting to see if they do. And also as well, it'll be interesting to see who Ryan Moore takes um, 
the leg up on because he always gets the first choice. He's their main man and be interesting to see who he does go for. And that often tends to uh, influence the bookmakers on who, who they make favourite out of the Bally Doyle contingent. So it'd be interesting to see who he goes for. The one I think he might go for is a horse called Magic Wand, who he won the Cheshire Oaks aboard uh, a couple of weeks ago in very good style. It was a good game performance from the front that day. If you go back and watch the race, dictated the pace throughout. And the, in the end was a very comfortable winner. But the horse I was interested in was a horse called Forever Together. We're stepping up in trip for the first time over the mile two at Chester and ran a good race that day and was very badly hampered a couple of furlongs out and only got some racing room towards the end of the race where it showed a good turn of foot and was running on very strongly at the end. And I think that horse could go potentially very well and maybe could reverse the form with Magic Wand. Also as well, Bye Bye Baby is one of their horses as well. Made a disappointing start to the season, but then won at the Cara last time out, and had some good form as a two-year-old, and has got some good staying pedigree in its blood. So that one could go well as well. So really, you like to think that Aiden O'Brien's got a few good chances coming into this race, and it'd be interesting to see how he does. Also as well, another stable I thought you should give mention to in this uh, year's renewal is William Haggis. He's going to more likely have two horses for uh, this race. Sea of Class, I thought, was a class horse um, in her race last time out when she beat uh, Thene's, uh, uh run in that race at Newbury, where really this horse, Sea of Class was a class apart from anything else in the race it was a good performance coming off uh, the pace was held up and in the end showed a really good turn of foot and was a hands and heels ride really didn't really have to uh, be asked much for pressure and in the end cruised by and definitely uh, made a statement for the Oaks and I thought seven and one that could be definitely a good each way bet and it definitely showed like it was going to improve going up in trip. So for me, I thought that one was a good horse. And also, well, give and take. Even though, yes, it won a week uh, race at uh, York last time out in the listed race uh, at the Dante Festival. Or I should say it was a group three, actually. But even though it won that race at uh, York, it did it in good style coming off the pace and showed really game attitude under James Doyle. And we tipped that horse up at the Dante in our Dante uh, specials. So it did well that day. And William Haggis has won this race before, like we mentioned with Dance and Rain back in 2011. And he's definitely going to have a strong hand. So they're the ones I think really will come to the fore. If you have to give me a top three of what's going to uh, do the business, I think my first selection would be Forever Together. I think second choice would be Sea of Class. And then I'll probably go back to Aiden O'Brien and I'll probably go with Magic Wand. So they're my top three for the Oaks. Let us know what you're going to be having a bet on on the day, what you fancy in the comments box below. Also as well, please subscribe to the video so you don't miss my Derby preview, which will probably be uploaded tomorrow. So subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. That's all I've got to say. Also, as well, you can follow me on Twitter as well. I should have mentioned there, at LuckyLoaders15. Please gamble responsibly, and we'll be seeing you soon.